Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Ecclesiastes 7.20 There is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Whenever someone is known for, for being a good person, for doing good, they still are not living a perfect life because we know that there is never a sinner too far gone and there is never a saint that has arrived. And when we are born again and have believed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repented of our sins, we are washed white as snow. Our sins are forgotten. They're as far as the east is from the west. We know that Christ's blood is the only thing that can save us, and we are saved by grace through faith. But when this occurs, we become just men and women, hopefully, uh, to the standpoint of we are standing up for the things of God continually. We are not backsliding or falling behind or growing lethargic or idle to the things of God or cold to the things of God, but we are standing for truth. And when we do good, the good that we do is not out of the innate nature that we possess because we know that by ourselves we are wicked sinners. We do not desire the things of God naturally, and it takes God for us to seek God. And then through our libertarian free will decision of choosing God, God then understands and discerns the authenticity and genuineness of our choice and if it is authentic, he then sends his Holy Spirit. So God has ultimate sovereignty over all things, but this does not negate the reality that we have free will. We, in fact, do have free will, not only from biblical uh, data and, and, uh, and uh, scripture that reveals that, but also through a lot of neuroscience that has happened in the last 50 years, uh, which we could touch on in another video. I believe I've addressed this if you type in my name and then say, does neuroscience prove or disprove free will, uh, there should be a video on it. But nonetheless, it is important for us to understand that when we become born again, there's no such thing as perfection in this life. We are seen as righteous, as if we had lived a perfect life because we are now covered by the blood, but because we're seen this way does not negate the reality that we still stumble and fall. We still sin, our mind wanders, we have lustful thoughts from time to time, we're, we can become prideful. Maybe we get very impatient and angry. Maybe we're very discontented and we have a rush spirit. Uh, maybe we're a gossiper at times. Whatever it is, it, there's a constant battle going on. And it is our duty to continue to seek God, to want to distance ourselves from all that is contrary to God. Because all that is contrary to God leads to consequences that are destructive and damning. So it is important for us to know that when we enter into the faith, there is not a person who enters into the faith who then lives a perfect life thereafter. Uh, we know from uh, 1 John that if anyone says they know the truth but do not sin, they are a liar and the, the truth is not in them. And I believe the beginning part was if anyone says they know God, um, but say they, were without, they are without sin, then they are a liar and the truth is not in them. So God is the truth, and if we say that we know God, but yet we're free from sin, we never sin ever, we're perfect, that is a very misconstrued, uh, perverted, deceptive outlook on life, and it is, is one that is, is prideful to the core. Because anyone who thinks that they're perfect in this life automatically is idolizing themselves. They may say, oh, God has made me perfect. But if they're not honest, if they don't have a humble heart, they're falling into pride and thinking that they are something that they are not. Again, the perception of God to us based upon what Christ has done, because Christ is the mediator, so what the Father perceives through Christ with us being covered, we are seen as perfect. But again, this does not make us perfect. And that is why there is not a just man on earth who does good, you know, who gives money to the poor, who, who utilizes and stewards his gifts, his and her gifts, uh, for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God, for the benefit of others. Uh, there is no one who presses into the spiritual giftings that God has given that very person, but is without sin. There is always going to be a battle. And it is important that we know this, because the times that we do fall, we need to not get discouraged. We will be convicted, 
but we need to not dwell in shame because shame is what leads us away from the cross, whereas conviction leads us back to the cross. When we sin, the born-again believer, and, and people obviously struggle with guilt and shame. Uh, on various levels to different degrees, we all will be like, I thought I conquered this. How could I have fallen back into this? Or maybe they think, oh, I just I did this and I've never done this before. How could God still love me? God is a God of love. He's a holy God. But as long as we repent of that sin, we need to know that God's grace is infinitely more than the damaging effects of sin. God's grace covers the true, genuine, born-again believer who lives their life in repentance because repentance is the disposition where we show God and ourself that we don't want to sin, we hate sin, but nonetheless we acknowledge that we do struggle with sin and when we fall, we turn to God, confess our sins and say, God, I have been in the wrong, forgive me. And then we need to rest in the peace and assurance of knowing that God's grace covers us, that the blood covers us, and that just because we sin while still being a saint does not make us evil and wicked. The enemy will come and lie, uh, lie to us. He'll, he'll say certain things like, "How you call yourselves a Christian? How could you have done that? How could you have fallen into this? I thought you were free from this, but now you, you've, you've had a, a falling back. You're, you don't actually love God. He'll say all these things, and we just simply need to say, devil, you're right. I have sinned before God, but God's grace covers me and greater is he that is in me than you who are in the world. And your coming judgment is soon to occur and you're going to be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever in torment. Because uh, as whatever, as the common quote has said, whenever uh, Satan reminds us of our past, we need to remind him of his future because he is going to a place of horrific torment. And for us who are born again, we will be free from that. And God wants to save all. And we need to understand that when we are born again, all the more pressures, all the more temptations are going to come. But again, the Holy Ghost within us can give us the strength and power to fight these things off. We ourselves might not win everything perfectly. Again, we, we will, there will be times where we're doing good, we're being sanctified, but we'll have our stumblings, failings, and fallings. But we need to know that these do not define us because the true disposition of the heart, if we're pursuing after God and the things of God, then we are showing, again, to God, ourselves, and to everyone around us that we are serious about the faith. We don't want to live a life that excuses sin. Rather, we are living a life that desires freedom from sin. Not freedom to sin, but freedom from sin. So, I mean, we just understand that there is not a just man on earth who does good but does not sin. We all will have our stumblings and failings, but our disposition towards sin is what reveals whether we are truly born again.